Ciao Ragazzi, I wanted to provide you all with an update on my 3RIC project. I've populated the PCB and I'm thrilled with how well it's working. For newcomers, I've spent years building a 6502 based computer, starting with the Ben Eater 6502 kit. After early successes, I set a bold goal, getting LoadRunner to run on my system. This drew me to the Apple II with its simple video hardware and extensive software library, the ideal direction for my project. To my amazement, I achieved this goal and gained invaluable insights along the way, but I wasn't satisfied with the graphics, so I envisioned a new revision for the 3 rick incorporating all I'd learned. Then, I set an even bolder challenge, getting Ultima 4 to run on my system. I've far exceeded that goal. Not only did I get Ultima 4 running, but my 3 rick system is stable enough to play it to completion, a major milestone that still amazes me. Countless other Apple II games now run flawlessly on my setup too. This journey keeps teaching me that I can achieve goals beyond my wildest imagination, and I'm still in awe of how far I've come with the 3 rick 6502 project. Recently, I couldn't resist adding a Tandy 1000 to my retro collection. It came with an ESP32 based Wi Fi modem. I connected it to my 3 rick and coded a simple terminal program, enjoying the nostalgia of connecting to online BBS systems. I recently added a 512 KB Macintosh to my collection, complete with an Apple ImageWriter 2 printer. I've been tinkering with it. Print Shop runs on 3 rick but I couldn't print to my serial device. More on that soon. So I developed a banner printing program for the 3 rick that turns text strings into Print Shop style banners on the ImageWriter 2. Let's briefly talk about the ImageWriter 2. The Apple ImageWriter 2 is a charming little serial printer. Essentially, you send text to it like you would a terminal, and it prints what you send. There are some basic control codes to bold, italicize, underline, or set double width text. You can still buy ribbons new today through Amazon for $6. Isn't that crazy? For some reason, I keep buying these printers. I now have three. If anyone wants to buy an ImageWriter 2, let me know. Both the banner printing program and the terminal program are available on GitHub, along with the ROM software for the 3RIC. Check them out, and feel free to share your own projects or feedback. I've been extending my DOS, which I now call OS3, because why not? I've modified the ROM to boot directly to my DOS. I've added keyboard debug routines. Pressing NumLock enables F1 and F7 through F12 to do things. I can switch between text and video modes, low and high res, from the keyboard. Pressing F1 cycles through hardware fonts. I have room for 64 fonts on the ROM. I've thoroughly enjoyed exploring VGA technology. No pixels here, just precise timing and voltage changes. My system supports text modes at 320 by 480 and high-res graphics at 280 by 192. In mixed graphics mode, the graphics area is 280 pixels wide, while the text region stretches to 320 pixels. Now that the 3 rick 6502 project is complete, is there anything that I would do differently? Reflecting on the journey, I've identified a few key improvements that would take it even further. I'd refine my ROM banking system. My banking scheme supports the Apple II language card behavior, but also allows me to switch between RAM and ROM in the 8000 to BFFF region. I'd expand this region and ensure that when writing, it targets RAM instead of ROM. This would improve flexibility. I designed this banking scheme during the breadboard design phase to make room for BASIC after running out of space due to the SD, FAT32, and DOS routines. After completing the PCB, I realized I could move most of the interrupt routines into a banked region, enabling on-the-fly banking during interrupt. I hadn't planned this earlier, but it let me add more of the Apple ROM routines to the ROM, and surprisingly, this made Mario Brothers start working. I really love that the system was flexible enough to allow me to do this without any hardware design change. Tweaking it to enable RAM writes would make it better. Apple II Cards I learned a lot about Apple II Cards. I'd redesigned my Disk II, mocking board, and serial devices as plug-in cards, making them pin compatible with Apple II slots. Ideally, I should just be able to use an off-the-shelf Apple II Super Serial card, a mocking board, and a Disk 2 controller with my system. I'd also refine the glue logic for better device integration. I learned that Apple II devices use two address spaces, the C0X0 region for writable registers, like C0E0 for slot 6, and a ROM region for read-only access, 256 bytes, such as C600 to C6FF for slot 6. For the Disk 2, I hard-coded its bootloader into the main ROM at C600, making the slots fully Apple II compatible would let me plug in cards and communicate seamlessly. I learned this while troubleshooting Print Shop. I realized I could boot it and design banners, but my serial device wasn't supported, preventing printing. Ideally, I'd integrate a super serial card for full compatibility. That challenge inspired the 3 Ricks banner printing program, but next time I would prioritize device support from the start. Improving the PS2 keyboard and mouse hardware integration. 
I'm really proud of my PS2 keyboard and mouse interrupt routines. They're clever, but bulky processor heavy and time sensitive, making simultaneous use unreliable. I spent hours debugging this instability, and if I restarted, I'd decode PS2 signals in hardware and update registers directly for smoother performance. For a future version, I'd consider swapping VGA for composite video to address current limitations and explore new possibilities. I'm really proud of my VGA implementation, but it comes with challenges. One, it locks the CPU clock to 1.57 megahertz, making programs run too fast. It prevents connecting to a physical Apple II disk. So much of the Apple II is timing sensitive, and cycle counting to measure precise times for connecting with devices is everywhere. Exploring composite video would be fascinating. It would deepen my understanding of the signal and let me align 3 ricks clock speed with the Apple II, improving compatibility. It requires complex circuitry to emulate the Apple II's composite video color burst technique. I wish I'd used potentiometers in the resistor ladder for the VGA output. That would let me tweak the colors to my heart's content. Tweaking to perfection. The colors are okay, but to tweak them now, I'd have to replace surface mount resistors. I'd flip the silk screen vertically. Darn it, it's upside down in the case. It's a funny reminder to double check layouts and future designs. I'd like to think that I won't forget this lesson. Time will tell. I had a blast gaining hands-on experience with surface mount soldering, but I used nearly every part size imaginable. Next time, I'd be more strategic about part selection to streamline assembly. I tried, to, I tried solder paste and a hot air gun. In the end, I found a soldering iron and standard solder to work the best for me, although a microscope was a must. I'd add ports to the case's USB and audio jacks. I've added these jacks to the board, but they're redundant. Integrating them with the case's ports would improve usability and aesthetics and simplify the PSB. Plus, the case has USB ports I could use to power devices like speakers or the Wi-Fi modem, enhancing functionality through the integrated ports. Essentially, if I were to do it again, I would iterate on the design such that my computer is a more faithful Apple II clone. That said, I regret nothing. I'm thrilled with where the 3 rec 6502 system stands. I don't see myself revisiting the hardware anytime soon. I've been mulling over exciting new explorations, but haven't committed to any yet. I feel like Bilbo Baggins returning from Mordor, exhausted but inspired. In the meantime, for software changes, here's what I have on my mind. I'm thinking about extending the DOS to support batch files and launching programs with parameters. I need a good editor, so I'm thinking about building one that works with my DOS. I've got mouse support, so I'd probably make use of the mouse. I might like to build an on-device assembler to go with the editor. It might be fun to integrate the editor with the Wi-Fi modem to enable prompting internet LLMs for 6502 code generation without having to involve a PC. In terms of hardware exploration, here are my top contenders. I'd love to know what you think. Would you vote for one of the following? A. A Motorola 68K based system, maybe something that can run Atari ST software. B. Building a RISC-V processor. RISC-V is an open source instruction set architecture. Unlike ARM, which requires a license, or x86, which is proprietary, RISC-V is open and free. I could take the plunge into FPGA, Verilog, and CPU design. I could create a computer with an FPGA-based RISC-V processor in a DIP package using external ROM and RAM and input devices. It'd be thrilling to get Linux and Doom running on it. Or C. Explore OpenCV. Uh, open computer vision and an object detection library and integrate with hardware to create a vision system on a Raspberry Pi 5 with a turret. I feel like Bilbo Baggins stepping back from Mordor after the 3 Rick 6502 adventure, exhausted but thrilled with the Ultima 4 victories, upside down silk screens and dreams of Risk 5 or turret vision systems. I'm not touching this hardware again anytime soon, but I'm dreaming of new quests. Which of my ideas would you vote for? Or what's your own retro computing story? Let me know in the comments and let's nerd out together. Arrivederci.